the question, is artistry conditioned by the contemporary situation? Yes, the answer will always and only ever be yes to that question. The availability of different recording machines and processes, like something I was talking about before, um, the availability of music, the availability of education and tutorials, and then just the the circulating idea that anyone can make a song. Um, the present era for musicians, it's like the, the way in which the technological situation today is conditioned making music is unbelievable. And, and, and the question has to be answered definitively like we're in a new world on, on the musical side of things. I mean, personally, the internet, the internet is indissociable from how to dress well. You know, like I put a couple songs out and then I checked Mediafire and then the zip had been downloaded 20,000 times. I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. And now I put a song out and it's all over the place in an instant. I make weird music. The fact that I can have some notoriety, even success making this music it's like kind of a, a miracle to me and it's cool because that means that there are like there's now this network of weirdos I tried to figure this out like why I sing the way I do like why when I open my mouth or whatever I produce this melody and like why it's got like that like whatever structure or sound and I think a lot about like when I learned like what singing was you know, like, what, what singing is is really strange. Like, there's no right way or wrong way to sing, you know. And so you learn, based on whatever culture you come up in, what singing is. And, like, you know, I came up under my mom singing a lot of, like, Smokey Robinson to me as, like, an infant infant, you know. And then I realized, like, oh, my mom's singing Smokey Robinson to me. I'm, like, four, and I'm, like, oh, this is Michael, or this is Janet Jackson. And But I think that I learned, like... Um, like almost like in my muscles, like patterns of vocalization that were, you know, R&B patterns of vocalization. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, on the one hand, there has been an emergence of like something called like you know, alternative R&B, other R&B, like, I, I read the other day, like, R and Ambien, which I liked. <laughs> I mean, you can say, like, one of the downsides of the internet is buzz, the trending and all that shit. But then, you know, like, everybody thinks, like, grunge happened naturally and had this, like, sustained moment naturally. It was, like, a big business thing, you know? So, like... I'm much more into like the people of the world pushing the trends, even if they're a bit more fickle, than having like longer lasting cycles, which are just supported by businessmen, you know? So I wouldn't say it's like the downside of the internet that things are, are trending. I mean, you know, you don't just get swept up in the trend, you develop a, a relationship with it and understanding of it and you're like, okay, yeah. Like there's actually this guy's doing this, but it's actually more influenced by this. This guy's doing this, but it's actually more influenced by that. And then you kind of parse the the trend. At the end of the day, it's more of a it's more of just a time thing and like a critical thing. So like you remember just a few years ago, there was this like freak folk thing, this alternative folk, indie folk thing, or whatever. And like everyone was like, this is folk's moment. You know, folk music is having its moment. And you know, now we've seen, or at least personally for me, you know, the artists that I was attracted to in that zone have transcended that zone. A lot of other artists, like, you know, fell by the wayside because they were just on the trend. You know, they were riding the trend. And like, you know, it's, I don't want to sound like arrogant or whatever, but like I came up before there was a trend. And like, I know that I'll be making the music that's like true to my heart after the trend has faded as well. I think that like the the internet era of 
R&B and rap music, like we're really on the, the edge of it right now. You know, it's still, I think, awaiting like, you know, like a real kind of breakthrough birth moment, you know? So like, I just turned 28 like a few days ago. But when I think about somebody who's like 18, like 10 years younger than me, like, you know, what they've come up on, on the radio, when they hear an SWV song or something, it must sound like a completely unfinished track, you know? They're like, oh, like, is this like a shitty YouTube rip? And you're like, no, no, this is like how it sounds. Like the, it's a really, really simple beat. The voices are like, most of the time flat or, or just out of, straight up out of tune and not auto-tuned, you know, like, and not just auto-tune like the way Future uses it, like where it's like, this is auto-tuned, but there's like so much auto-tuning going on, like in these sort of, on the level of production to detail a voice so that there's absolutely no um, mistakes as it were. And I mean, I think these mistakes are like, for me, like evidence of like humanness. The formal, one of the formal characteristics of pop music is that you're supposed to make the seams disappear, you know? At least in contemporary situation, like, again, pop music was something very different 15 years ago. But you're supposed to make all the seams disappear so that you don't hear it. You don't hear it as a song or a voice or a drum here and something there. You just hear it as a finished product with no, you know, no history almost. And I like to take that pop form and then just kind of like in one spot, like push the sound too far so that it becomes awkward. And then you see all the seams. It's kind of like you're looking at it and then one seam is revealed and then you can see the whole way the song is constructed. And then it become, you become aware of it as like, not just a song, but also like sound, a voice, a person standing there doing this work, you know, like, I think that for some of these like, you know, kids who are again, like 18 or whatever, they must hear like, um, I don't know, it's so funny because it's something like in sync, which at the time was like the most produced thing ever. Like, you know, when we were kids, there was no registration of it as uh, like some kids and some guys organizing and stuff. It was like a thing finished. These guys were like from another world, you know, and I think if, if I were 18 hearing that right now, you hear it as just these like kids with like halfway decent voices one of them has a good voice like you can hear really hear the seams now and so like going back before this new era of pop which like i would date at like 2006 2004 5 6 or something you can really hear humanness in it again um i yeah i really wonder what it what it must have been or what it would be like now to like listen to Aaliyah and not have it be infused with like that aura of it being completed and perfect. Cause for me, like, you know, back in one piece is like, it's like a, you know, it's just this like impenetrable perfected thing, but you hear like some of her acapellas and stuff on YouTube and you can hear all the variation in her voice and all the, you know, they left it untuned. They left it so raw. Timbaland was, was brilliant for this because that's really what made her so special, you know, makes her someone worthy of the obsession she receives. Yeah, I wonder. I, I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately too with my record, like, <clears throat> you know, only a few times in my life have I had this experience where you find this record, this like older record, and you put it on and you're like, fuck, where the fuck did this come from? This is crazy. And I love the idea of like some kid in 2081, like finding Total Loss and putting it on and being like, oh my God, this is so insane that somebody made this. So that's like, I mean, I think that's part of the, the reason people are feeling like R&B right now is because the arrangements are so sentimental and so like, honest and there's no like pretension and bullshit about it you just make an emotional ass song and like sing it really really try and sing it beautifully and then like you know it just it's a very honest form and i hope that like 
in 70 years or whatever, like somebody throws on my record and they're like, whoa. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, whoa. <laughs> 